This is the Podcraft Beer Show, episode 26 for Monday, January 11th, 2021. Today's show is our first ever Stout Fest. <laughs> Welcome to the 26th episode of the Podcraft Beer Show for Monday, January 11th, 2021. The goal of the show is to examine the best craft beer from Southern California and beyond. This is Tech Guy Steve with today's introduction for the host, Chris and Charlie. Today's show is our first ever Stout Fest. We'll be sharing with you four amazing stouts from San Diego's Modern Times, and then a great after-party stout that was a collaboration between Three Chiefs Brewing Company out of Los Angeles in collaboration with Untitled Art from Wanakee, Wisconsin. If you'd like to subscribe to the show via your favorite podcast player app, then head over to thepodcraft.com and look for the subscribe links. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures of all the beers, and other good information at thepodcraft.com. This is the Podcraft Beer Show. I'm your host, Chris. Got your other host, Charlie. Yo! We got tech guy, Steve. Hello. And today we got a couple of special guests. We got Josh in the house here. How you guys doing? And we got Jake and Steve. Howdy. We had to, uh, we had to bring in some heavyweights. Today we're, uh, we're going to focus on, uh, on all stouts. Josh uh, has graced us with some, uh, some modern time stouts. Today we're going to make a run at the Ultra Set and a Batch 2 Monster Tones. No stout about it. Stout. We are all stout day. The first stout fest. That's it. The first it. stout fest. It, it You're going to have to get a bigger microphone stand for yourself. Nope. That's ridiculous. I don't tiny. think this will be the last stout fest, though, right? Like, Hopefully not. I mean, next, as long as we keep Next week has them. to be an IPA fest. There we go. <laughs> next week is going to be all crawlers from the answer. All West Coast. We, we could do a pills fest, too. <laughs> I mean, that, that works. Well, let's get to a, it. We just do a fest of all fests. What are, you, uh, what are we starting off with there, Charlie? We're going with the Modern Times Ulta Ultra Coffee. Oh. So the uh, the Modern Times Ultra Coffee, it's a uh, uh, Imperial Double, uh, or it's a double coffee stout, right? Uh, 13.5%. Uh, the write-up on this is um, they, they say they uh, wanted to showcase everything that's possible with beer and coffee. So they loaded it with five pounds of barrel uh of their house roasted ultra blend made just for this beer. Uh, then they add massive quantities of uh, freshly pulled ultra blend espresso <clears throat> shots from their Loma Land Cafe. Then hit it with generous helpings of uh, Guardian Spirit. So Danger, co- Will Robinson. <laughs> so coffee and then more coffee and then a little bit of beer, I guess. I'm going to give it. you three guesses what it smells like. Coffee? Yes. So, Josh, the, uh, the, the ultra set. Um, what was like kind of their basis behind uh, coming out on that? Coming they, out with that it, it really was because so they were when they were doing adjuncts. You know they they do a lot of adjunct stouts. They wanted to do a set where they could um, highlight a individual um, adjunct. So they did this is the first one that we're having is coffee. So they, it's just a coffee edition. Um, and then they did one with just coconut. And I'm, I'm pretty sure on this one they did the coconut. They did a toasted coconut, a fresh coconut. Okay, wait a minute. Can you start over? Because I wouldn't listen. And then <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I already forgot what I was talking about. So was there um, coffee in it? There was coffee in it. And then they did a vanilla one. And I, I can't remember what vanilla was in this one. Well, I mean, Check we have notes me. somewhere, but um, and they might have done a blend of coconut or blend of uh, vanilla as well. So they were really just trying to highlight a singular adjunct and it, i gosh They've i'm trying to well. remember back to the tasting they were talking about um a lot Should of you. people a lot of theory members were just kind of hey you know you guys do all these ones with three or four adjuncts you know what about doing just a singular adjunct and so this is what kind of the byproduct of that was and uh <clears throat> I, I remember the first ultras they were super delicious um and then this set uh, I this said I actually remember this was post COVID, so there was no. This is actually the first time I'm tasting this version of it. I, I tasted the first version, but you know you had to buy it without tasting it, which you know that's been the case for everybody. But yeah, the 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 first release was 450 sets hand numbered bottles. Yes, and we got I got three of them. Yeah, because they're they were that good. Yeah. 
and the um and this one they're they're not hand numbered. They they open this one up to to theory and um uh the other Yeah, the lead, right? they yeah, I think the theory got you could get two. Yeah, I got two for the theory and then the rest of them were like a first come first serve. I think they did a total of 900 or a th- somewhere in a 900,000 range um for the rest of them. And they definitely didn't make public ever. So we did. So we're back on our uh our uh, record of uh Beers you can't get anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, so I would say all three of these are are, are not obtainable uh, unless you're in the, the unless gray you market want, or you're trading. You're cutting a big check to get these at this point. Right. So the I don't know if you'd believe this or not, but I uh, I get a lot of notes of coffee on, on, the, on top Shocker. of it. Shocker. Shocker. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's you know, the uh, I'd have to go back. I think this was a June purchase. So it's been say it's been six months. These have been this one's been sitting, and so it's uh the coffee is it's it's there and it's but it's not over there. You know what I mean? Like you're not you're not drinking a cup of coffee. You're drinking a stout, barrel aged stout with a coffee. No, I like flavor it. to it. It's it's I mean it's it's milder than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be super rich and super coffee, you know, intense. But it's just super smooth. What do you think, Steve? Thick. He says thick. This is not thick comparatively. <laughs> hey, see, will you hand me that bottle? There? I would. Uh, I would say too. It's like uh, I'm not not to complain to you, Charlie, because you put it on ice, so it wasn't too warm. You want me to tell you what the temperature was? Yeah, because I 50 degrees. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you very much. You're 76 degrees from across here. 53. Right. 52. I, one of the things I've always loved about drinking heavy stouts is as they mellow as they warm up, the flavors come out. And like I, I have no problem with like pouring a glass of stout, taking a couple of sips, walking away, and coming back to it later. It's a totally different experience, right? When you open it, you pull it out of the refrigerator or where, wherever you're storing these, and then um, as it gets to that 50, 55 degrees, is that um, empty? No, I think there's a little more. Gosh, bring it over here. I didn't come here to watch. <laughs> You know, save a little air for a little cuvee at the end. So it awesome. smells a little boozy, but that does, there's no taste. Right? There's not. I mean, there's you really don't you don't taste any. You smell like the barrel on there. Look at that. Um, yeah, the, I I would definitely say the 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 bourbon barrel doesn't come through as much as just a, a standard bourbon barrel aged style, like if a monster spark or something like that. And you know, I don't know what it is. I, I mean, I'm getting a little bit on the. I haven't taken a sip of it in a while, and it's kind of coming through at the end. But it's definitely not a boozy stout. I would I would say it's a it's a very balanced. It's super well balanced. What do you think of that, Jake? I like it a lot. <laughs> uh, not a lot of bite. It you just use the microphone if you're gonna be Yeah, it's sometimes you get stouts that have that huge bite to them, where you you're battling that, then not with this. Super, this is a drinker. Super smooth. Yeah, no, that's really, it, really easy to drink. It, it's actually a little dangerous. You could, all, I'm, I'm like drinking it faster than I typically drink a stout because I just want to keep drinking it. Yeah, no, that's a good beer. Yeah, how good? Give me your rate, man. I'd, uh, um, you're the one I, that likes. You know, I mean, I, gosh, I mean, it's phenomenal. I don't know. I'd put that in the ninety percent category. You know, if if not higher, I'd probably say uh, on a scale of five, I'm saying a four point five. Four point five. Yeah, I just think I. I mean, it's it's phenomenal. But I have, uh, I've, I've, you know, so it's this is one of those beer sets that that you like. I mean, I think you you really kind of build it up in your in your head, right? Um, I mean, I think like that the monster tones, like the um, but it, it like gosh, if you're gonna drink a stout, like if you were gonna introduce somebody to drinking like a coffee stout, like that's the way to go, right? Like, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, yeah. and, and I, I will say, like I we just had. Uh, one you gave me, Charlie, the other half cocoa craze from other half brewing. I don't know who you're talking to. Um, seriously, I have no, I have no, I have no, you have no recollection of that. Yeah. Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny. Jake, that Jake and I that. here split that last <laughs> night as our Friday capper. I'm sorry, um, which one was it? It's the cocoa, I think cocoa craze or cocoa, yeah, cocoa craze. Sounds right. Yeah. yeah. The yeah, bottle. The, the bottle, yeah. And so we, oh, yeah. we had that yesterday. And I, the more I, stouts I drink, the more adjunct stouts I drink. The le- I, I want to say the less I impressed I am, but 
the the more it becomes oh, that's really good but i it's harder to get your socks knocks off knocked off the more you drink these type of beers that's right. a, yes. it's that's yes. what i'll say it's like but then again when you drink these stouts okay modern times is right up there you know the other half is is really good they're all they're known for their hazies but they make some pretty decent stouts uh but when it comes to stouts, the king of the hill is porous. Yeah. I mean, like a, a double dose or a proper dose, those are definitely delicious. But, you know, it's just, I think it's just like the more you drink them, the harder it is to like delineate, like what made this one so much better than this one. And so it's like, it's, it is hard. I, I do, and I love the adjunct stuff. Like that's fun for me. As like, I was actually, I think we were talking last night, Jake, uh, about how I kind of miss the um, the straightforward Imperial Stout. Like, just give me the stout that I had when I first started drinking stouts. You know, like I, I still remember I couldn't get enough of them. Like, I was I was literally running around to liquor stores to find Monster Park. It just Monster Park. It was not right. barrel aged, no adjuncts, nothing. And I was I was happy with that. Yeah, I think. Today, if I had that, I would be like, "Oh, that's that's all right, right." It'd be a different experience. Like, they, but though, but Modern Times put out puts out some unbelievable, just straight stouts, right? That they look at, like the beautiful meadows, like the the monster town, or what was it, um, modem tones and beautiful uh, meadows, um, barrel age though, barrel age, yeah, barrel age. But, oh, but I, not, I was yeah. just like just non barrel age. It was like the the pilot batch of it. You know, sure. it's just like that was good, right? But now it's like, would that be good to me? Right. You know. Their their barrel program is phenomenal at uh, modern times there. No, I think they um, I think that they were the the first kind of stout that I um, uh, that that I really enjoyed. Right, like I, I previously I was like uh, just a uh, West Coast IPA guy. Right, I had yeah. started accumulating some stouts, and then uh, I think in this uh, this backyard we did a uh, stout uh, stout night a few years ago. Modem tones vanilla. Batch one, uh, monster, monster monst- tones. Yep, monster tones. We did a uh, Horace proper dose. Wish I would have been invited. And a to few that. other, a uh, few other beers. Yeah, uh, and that was the night that we were like, wow. Yeah, it was. It was kind of like an eye opener. Like, oh my goodness, this is great. And it's and yeah, and you know, it's like you, <clears throat> you brought up how we were. Sorry, sorry about the cough. Uh, you brought up <laughs> the modem tones vanilla just shows up. Oh, well, surprise, surprise. Yeah, yeah. Might have to do something about that. Um, the bro camps, but we were, you know, I was talking to, to, uh, uh, Jake, was it last night we were talking about, uh, beers that introduced you to a style? Was yeah, that we, last night? Yeah. About yeah. That. So, um, because, well, just because it came across my feed on Instagram is like stone is bringing back sublimely self-righteous for a period of time. I was like, you know, that was, that was the first black IPA I had Cascadian IPA. And I was like, that it introduced you to that style and like that's what monster park was for me like that was my first like heavy you know 13 percent imperial stouts i'd had stouts before but yeah. you know guinness like what do you right do with that? yeah there's a little different experience when you're yeah. talking right. and so it's just like i remember like just oh my gosh i can't drink this i have to sip this <laughs> you know it's like right and so it's like it's kind of fun to think about like what, where, where you came from as a beer drinker, where you started off, you know, like what was your, you know, your first IPA you were, you brought a, you know, IPA is like Sculpin. Right. Yeah. Was, that was my first. That like, was the beer, you know? And I, like, I remember we had a buddy that had a keg of ruination, you know, and that was like, Oh my gosh, GT? you can't get, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Couldn't get enough of that stuff, drinking it like crazy. And, and like, I think back to, I was like, I, I liked it then. I don't, I don't know if I, cracked a uh, ruination if i would think about it the same way i thought about it today it's just like right. the evolution of your palate right i used to keep uh sculpin on tap like when uh, when you could get that and that was like impossible to get like in a keg at that point that was long before you could get uh you know three rows of watermelon sculpin at your local target right <laughs> like when when like that was the beer that built <laughs> watermelon sculpin um, man Ooh. <laughs> uh you know ballast point but that sculpin was unbelievable you point. ready to go to number two Tell you two things I'm not, Charlie. What is it? Scared and responsible. <laughs> okay, we got Ultra Vanilla. This is their, whew, gosh, 
Blended yeah. barrel aged Imperial Stout with vanilla added, and it, gosh, it smells really good. I, I will say on the first set of the Ultra, this was this was my favorite. This it was I, it was it was. I I really like the sweetness of the vanilla in a stout. I think it just it it sits well with the heavy grain bill. It sweetens it up a little bit. That roastiness from the grains, um, the dark richness from it, and so. Uh, this was the one I, I like the most. And I, I will say the coconut one, I'm not a I'm typically not a huge fan of coconut, but coconut beers I am not afraid of. Like it's it's a like that that doesn't I, I, I wouldn't eat put coconut on anything, but I'd put it in a beer. Yeah. I don't don't know why that is, but but this one was my favorite the first time around. Yeah. Pretty magical. So so they're right up. They say they loaded with a cornucopia of vanilla from all over the world at an astounding rate of 2.24 pounds per barrel. This is the most uh, vanilla-laden beer we've ever created and the most expensive. In order to capture the full-spectrum vanilla experience, we utilized uh, beans from Madagascar, Uganda, Mexico, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and Tahiti. Uh, the result is an astoundingly complex beer that introduces you to the aspects of the vanilla bean you didn't even know existed. This beer is tasting like marshmallows in 12 dimensions, coated in chocolate, harvested by mermaids. <gasps> They're mermaids. not wrong. They're That's not what I was wrong. thinking. They're not wrong. I it, I will tell you, like the coffee is great. This, to me, the vanilla... Wow. It, yeah, Dude, it does. I mean, that's like a marshmallow, it's right? It's stupid like, good. Yeah, before you mentioned, before you gave that list... The marshmallow came out. I'm like, that's it's like Lucky Charms. Absolutely. I mean, it's so uh, like that's. Um, what did we have a few Magically weeks ago that delicious. we were like was like Lucky Charms milk? I think yeah. is what they. But that like that's what I get there. Like is um, that's like this awesome sweetness, but not too sweet. Yeah, the vanilla is just amazing. For I smell. Mul- I'm in molasses. I get smelling the molasses. I don't. I know there's none in there, but that's all that sugar together with the mm-hmm. is. Yeah, creating that smell for me. The taste is definitely vanilla. That's an amazing beer. Yeah. I, so that's a but, notch up for me. Like that, it just ramps up. Like we just stepped. We went up, the right uh, direction. On yeah, that. for yeah. sure. Like well, starting with that coffee, hitting that vanilla. This would be like you could drink double the amount of this than you could the coffee. Yeah, one. I I could drink this all day every day and yeah. never need to drink another beer in my life. Like that, I get if I could just drink this, I would be poor. But <laughs> maybe yeah that's yeah, a i just got asked if i'd make it to the end of the day that's a uh man that's just so smooth i just love vanilla and beers uh, again too not overly alcoholic you know you don't you don't don't get the alcohol burn from this at all it's just smooth balanced the bourbon is in there but it's not overbearing the vanilla is in there but it's not overbearing it's they, they did it right, that's for sure. Yeah, and I, I, that's the one thing I, I will say about them. For the, for the most part, modern times, when they, when they do an adjunct beer, they do the right amount of volume of the adjuncts. They're not, there's not a predominant flavor that's coming out. It's, yeah. it, I mean, in, in this one, they're not really playing with a bunch of different things, but the vanilla isn't taking over the beer. It's no, it accentuating the beer. It's well, I don't know how many times we went to those taste test things or taster things where we were at and they were handing out like six different stouts in a row. And gosh, it was like every one tasted just yeah, so much barrel and so much I mean, maybe it was me then, I don't know, but I couldn't hardly remember I'd be handing them to you mm-hmm. and I'm like, Oh, I didn't it. I didn't mind. When no, you came I know that, but I, I mean it was, it, was just, it was good. It was great. They were right. hard to drink, but they weren't I don't think they were putting these out. No. Yeah. So like they, um, you know, I, I, I have a, like a similar, you know, we'd go down there and it was never the cans. It was always the bottles that you would get to taste, right? Yeah. It'd be like four. For or the five. most part. Yeah. yeah they did. Like, they had a couple stouts. Mm-hmm. They occasionally would do, they do sours. They sours, would do the stouts. Right. And stouts. Occasionally. Stouts, I think. Not occasionally. very often. And if they had like a, if they had an adjunct um, IPA, they would put the, they would let you, t- they would put that in the tasting. They just kind of, it, occasionally, it, if they had something brand new coming out that was different, yeah. They would well, when you in. walk Maybe. into that place, you want to, you want to go in there and you just feel like tapping everything that they right. have and saying, "Let's get it, let's get all this right now and taste it." But yeah. you know, obviously, you can't do that. So yeah, they. Um, I had a similar experience, like as as Charlie, like they just tasting more heat, and and that'd be the difference between say this bottle and you know just a, a regular Monster Park or whatever with 
coffee or whatever, right? Yeah. Like maybe it tastes a little more barrel or something, maybe not as smooth as this. Um, but the uh, yeah, most remember, of the stuff we were tasting was super barrel rich. I mean, super, and the people were well, eating it up. They I, loved it. I, I, I will say this. This has been in a bottle for six months. Yeah. And I think, I, I would say this is pretty prime time to drink this. I Because I think a lot of that barrel flavor mellows yeah like i and i think that's probably part of the problem with not part of the problem probably the, that barrel getting that barrel heavy that flavor yeah. at the beginning is when it's a fresh beer it came right off the barrel they go from the barrel to the bottle within days and it goes from the bottle to our hands within weeks and so the a lot of times if you don't like that barrel heavy barrel burn the longer that beer sits the more Mellow that part here. that part's gonna be yeah we found and so that. this is I mean these have been sitting in bottles for six months sure you know and so that barrel is kind of like falling out but I also think like this is this is a good time to drink this it's um yeah that's the next one that just got popped that's a phenomenal beer yeah. I do think though you know when we talk about like beers that that um holy crap you know, kind man, of this thing is smelling fantastic. With your membership, like, you know, like as, as you were kind of procuring those and we were trading beers, you know, I'm, I have a couple of memberships and, and, um, like I, I started accumulating even though like they taste, you know, smelled kind of heat, like they were, um, smelled kind of heavy. I started accumulating knowing that at some point, if so many people like these barrel aged beers, like there was probably a pretty decent chance at some point I would start digging on them. Right. Yeah. Which is like how we ended up with that fat backlog of crazy beers the, you mean the the one that's in my fridge right now where like i don't even know if, if i drank a bottle a day i would still be like june before i'm done right june, <laughs> june. <laughs> it's Kinda early isn't it <laughs> but yeah well, but i'll be collecting some while i'm drinking that charlie would be going till 2024 <laughs> if he had a beer a day that, that, well that's 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 why we like charlie I, yeah, I, did. Like, I, I, I we like it for a lot of other things, but that's that's like you a know nice what? little. I get the joy of popping these things open and getting the first sniff out of here before any of y'all do. <laughs> so I, that's the best. How's part. that coconut smelling? Because I, I'm give me a second here. It's about to tell us it's spoiled and we can move on. I'm, <laughs> yeah, you better you better crack that. Uh, it, do you remember uh, the? I think it was Monstra tones yeah most are tones most are tones yes. sorry yep uh that uh came in and like bottles were bad and there was a there was a couple issues with bottles and things like that so i was like i had like four of those sitting at my house and i was like oh man are these bad and you know whatever so i popped two of them they were that, fine they were oh my gosh <laughs> not only they were were they fine they uh they're they're a lot like that ultra coffee yeah because that that coffee that whatever they use i didn't whatever i didn't know a co- i don't well yeah used, whatever yeah. i'm sure i'm pretty sure it's an espresso blend type thing because that's yeah. that's going to give you the most flavor from that coffee but that thing was so delicious and i was just like what who did they not store them right like i don't know what the issue was but the two of the four that i've had have been fine i almost brought one today that was the beer that i was i thought about that was bringing your first mistake you almost cavern. brought it i got told not to bring anything because we had no too many, i never but... said that that was me that was like a fool like a fool Who i would put say you in charge i know josh put me in charge by asking <laughs> well, me i was like hey we're probably all right yeah that that's the that exact back, words he I gave that me back so next time we're not probably all right and i'll never, just never all right Hey, so the um, how were you storing? You know, speaking of those monster tones, mm-hmm. how how were you storing those? So I uh, years ago came into a uh, a gift. I'll call it a gift at this point. And I didn't have free ninety nine. Vi- yeah, yeah, it was free ninety nine. Well, it wasn't free ninety nine, but but in retrospect, it was free ninety nine. You had to pay to get fixed. Yeah. So I uh, had a buddy of mine uh, that was demoing a restaurant, and the restaurant had a six foot commercial true fridge. Just you know, countertop height, things a beast. That was GT again. Was that that was Gary Turner? That Coconut. Was, yeah, that was that was our buddy. There he is. He and so he he's like, hey, he's like, I got a buddy, and he's like, I was like, he needs to get rid of it. What do you got? And I was like, at that time, I was like, I got two hundred dollars cash, and he's like, all right. So he drops it. He delivers it to my house. I didn't even have room for it yet. I was like totally like gutting my garage. 
And so I, I literally, it literally sat right inside my garage door for like six months as I was like demolishing. Taunting me with yeah. it. Yeah. And so like I, I get it. I, and I finally, I put six taps on it. But now it's because it, I was home brewing. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to make so much beer. I'm going to do all this. Well, I started buying beer and they don't they were, mess up. They were cold. They, they, they don't cold. mess up. They don't mess. But I have this commercial fridge. Yeah. That literally has I, bottles on tops of bottles. I've actually thought about. I'm I'm actually in the process of like considering building a shelf so I can have another layer oh, of bottles. You need a wine rack type thing where you can just sit them in there. And just well, slide you, them in. I, you know, actually with beer, you don't want to lay them on sideways because of the oxidation. You want to actually keep them cap up. Allegedly. So, what do you guys think of that beer? It's a great one. Coconut Amazing. is outstanding. It's crazy, huh? It is. I haven't Amazing. finished the vanilla yet, so like a lot of times you get Drink that up. coconut and you, you it almost tastes like suntan lotiony if it's not done right. Horrors like you mean yeah, a no, that's... tone? <laughs> so this uh you know they're right up on this. This beer Banana was dosed with uh blend. <laughs> they say it was uh dosed with a absolutely staggering sixty seven pounds per barrel, roughly two point one six pounds per gallon, the majority of which was toasted in house, the smaller quantities of raw coconut uh, coconut were mixed in. Okay. I, what I will Jake say, have to say, I will about say it? when I've done research on coconut beers that I like, roasting the coconut is my is my very favorite. Like if if you roast the coconut that goes in there, and I haven't even tasted this yet, but I know that roasted coconut is going to be delicious because it just brings out the flavor of the coconut, not just that it 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 masks that sunscreeny garbage to it. If if it's toasted, yeah, yeah that that was my question is. How do you prepare the coconut? I like toasted over roasted. Is there a difference? Yes. All right. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. So, what was that one? What was the one that had all the adjuncts of coconut? Oh, it was yeah. A so Horus. It was a horse. It was a horse. Yeah, it was horse. Uh, it was coconut crown. Like they did seven different. It was like coconut candy, coconut the sugar, milk. coconut. Yeah, um, toasted coconut, raw the coconut, lime in the your coconut, sister's you coconut. Shake it all up. So so let, 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 mm-hmm. let there, me tell you a little. There is so much coconut in that that mm-hmm. Apple iTunes wouldn't let me put it in the show notes because it just overflowed. <laughs> they they think it was like. <laughs> Did they kick you off Twitter? No. <laughs> can, can I tell? I I, I know. What, here. Little little story of coconut, right? So my grandfather. This I'll try to make this as quickly as possible. But Jake over here is going to laugh when I say that because every time I say I'm going to make a quick story, it, Jake is it quick? It's never quick. All right, so when I was a kid, my grandfather, who's now passed, but he used to make fudge all the time. Is that, is that yeah. coconut right there? Yeah, I got coconut oh, no. now. Yeah. I got Get coconut now, and I, I just want more. <laughs> just, he, he just just dump it all in because... What are you waiting for? for, for slim? <laughs> so when, when I tell you this, this, this story, you're going to be like, we're, we're, I want more coconut right now. So my grandfather used to make fudge. I loved his fudge. And so one year for my birthday, he thought it'd be hilarious because he knew I didn't hit, didn't like coconut. Now, I was a 10-year-old boy at this time, didn't like coconut. So my grandfather took a big chunk of fudge and rolled it in shaved coconut. Now, shaved coconut is probably the worst format of coconut in the history of coconut, right? I literally started crying because I was like... I. He, I loved his fudge, but I couldn't get to the fudge because of the coconut. Now, little did I know that my grandfather had a block of fudge that was like three times the size of the coconut one he rolled in me. But that was his kind of funny way of like, dude, it's coconut. You can like coconut and eat chocolate too. Uh, this does not taste like fudge rolled in coconut. It tastes like fudge rolled in toasted coconut. <laughs> that I hate coconut, but this, well, I don't hate coconut anymore, <laughs> but I hate this. Make I would mind. drink every single day i actually like i will say this i the first batch of ultras that came through the vanilla is my favorite i just had this and this is right now of the three that we've had is the best one hey we definitely i think we popped those in the in the right direction right starting with that yeah. coffee hitting yeah. the vanilla you get a little bit of sweetness in the vanilla and and here you know when i smell it i don't smell like it, it you smell the coconut i smell coconut i smell barrel you taste it though and there's just a coconut explosion Right, like like the uh, I don't I don't think it smells as coconutty as no. like the the flavor comes through, and it's sweet. I I don't know if it's the roasting of the coconut that brings that kind of sweetness to it, but probably it's not, a little bit, yeah. It it's it's so 
it's good. It's just good. Like I don't even know. There's no words to even yeah. like. No, that's a that's a five, right? So like, here's the difference when you when you ask Liam, you like, nah, I don't know about a five. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm you kidding might have. You. I think your taste might be It's a four point nine. There it is, close enough. I I I think I rank those. Uh, I I I rank those the coffee, well the the coconut vanilla. Then uh, the I'm just saying that there's 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 a couple of stouts that I've had that are just a couple of what's that? That blue beer was definitely that's your favorite uh, your favorite beer of 2020, huh? Well, that I that I that I was shocked to drink and sure. t- taste it. I mean, who whoever thought that blueberries would be incredibly good? Kind of rolled in like not expecting much. Yeah, that was knocked, a knock. Yeah, that was that was a phenomenal. Beer. That was like I felt a softball way. that I hit out of the park. On my taste buds, that's how yeah. good it was. That was a really good beer. Yeah. Shockingly good. My, my only sad moment right now is that I could only get two of these instead of three. Yeah. Right now. That's how I feel. Because this is the first I've cracked of this. I have a, you know, we had the 2019. I, I had three of those. Mm-hmm. We drank those as we went through, and they were all delicious. But, like, right now, I'm I'm sad that I only have one more bottle of this to drink. Because... Wait. Just wait till we uh, turn off the recorder and start doing shots of that maple syrup. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, Charlie, you got to cook pancakes out here? Because I'm about in, just dude. one giant one. <laughs> just one ch- <laughs> in. <laughs> 36 inch pancake. That beer is unbelievable. This, this is actually, this is. That is a goodie. This well, is the best beer I've what's had. What's weird in a is long this time. beer that I'm holding in my hands has all those adjuncts in it. So the 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 final beer we we held on to, uh, you know, and I thought this would be a great pairing with with those three. How they they focused on their coffee, they focused on their their vanilla, and they focused on coconut uh, to follow that up with the monster tones yeah. uh, batch two, which is all those adjuncts uh, beer aged in bourbon barrels that were previously used to age maple syrup. Right? Yeah, it, yeah. It, well, uh, I don't know if that's correct. There may be a bottle, a barrel or two of that. Um, I will say that they're. I would guess that some of those. I don't know if Ultra they it's, made a completely new batched, and, or if it's says, a blend. This one says Imperial Stout aged in maple bourbon barrels, and then with the coffee. So maple bourbon. And, so yeah. they brought cr- maple Crown here's, Royal barrels. I, their, I get that's that's what we're talking, right? Yeah, we're, right. Not maple syrup. Here's their uh, here's here's their write up. Uh, decadence. Thy uh, thy is monster tones. This. Uh, outlandishly delicious beer is a blend of monster park and modem tones both aged in bourbon barrels which had previously housed maple syrup uh following the blend the beer was conditioned on freshly roasted coffee beans toasted coconut and a whole lot of vanilla when it was all over what arose was a dessert uh laden beverage um of the highest order with flavors and aromas of tiramisu coffee chocolate roasted marshmallows we're pretty excited for you to put some of this in your face Yes, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Sign me up. I um, think this one is spoiled because because <laughs> you don't want to share. Is yeah. that is that why it's That's spoiled? Exactly it. Yeah, so I've this whole time I've had my uh, my vultures fair as my palate cleanser, and I've just been going uh, stout to stout. Good call. <laughs> That's what I had a Banksy. I have not <laughs> taken a sip of it since the coffee stout. So for those of you listening out there, if you want to drink some of the beers that 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 we're drinking today, uh, both Vultures Fair and Banksy are available at uh, um, <laughs> Burning Beer, Burning Beer, Beer, baby. Love those guys. Hey, a little plug for uh, uh, this week. Um, you know, if you follow San Diego Beer News, uh, Brandon Hernandez, like the the beer writer, worked at Society for a long time. Uh, he just named his um, his beer uh, of the week was uh, in praise of Bacchus. I think was what he what he had said. It's a good call. Um, there was a little write up in that in that article uh, about um, about Jeff and his cool ship and kind of making beers out there. It's a really really cool article. And we uh, talked all about that with him. We did. I, that was kind of cool. Yeah, I uh, ship. Just just what I know a little bit. Just talking to him, but um, I love the fact that I don't know if you guys if they talked about this in previous episodes, but they actually went over. And saw how the cold ships were originally done. Did he not so that listen the, to our podcast I, on you know, that? I'm Josh isn't a very loyal well, listener. Get out! Just that great story give me about that the chunk of wood. Give me that, that stout. You're on the exactly road. Exactly how he had culture. You know, he pulled his own cultures off. Even, of, jo- uh, even Jake John heard that Roy's one. Wall. They were at Cantillon. <laughs> Speaking of the Bacchus, um, 
two but different I, barrels. That's so ninety three and ninety four, yep. and as delinquents are the only ones to be able to get the other. Ninety four was the delinquent, whereas ninety three, I believe, was uh, you know the peons, the, the commoners, the, the peasant, the, the peasant right. beer. I actually got them both. <laughs> I did too, yes. but the but the, the delinquents better than the peasant. Is it? The, it, it is. So I, so I actually I how went many out of those there. you got, guys? Let's see what. Well, uh, I went out there one day over lunch, drinkage? mainly to pick up some vulture. Absolutely right. Like they uh, they had vulture and and they they had some pizzas, and I was like, man, a pizza would sound great for lunch. So I went out there to get a pizza, got some vultures, and uh, then they were like, buy one get one half off bottles. So they they gave me a ninety three and a ninety four. Oh, okay. That's, I was pretty that's, excited. Yeah, that's what you want to do. I will say, like, the, I'm, Jake, we've had this, right? The delinquent one is better than the peasant. Yeah, I've, ha- I've had them both. Um, two of each. Uh, when they had their buy one, get one half off mm-hmm. over the holidays, I went up and picked two of the, I, I believe the one you guys tasted, which was the, the pear. Yeah, it was great. Oh, and um, praise a, yeah, praise a pear. And praise right? a pear. I uh, got two bottles of that. Phenomenal. And, and then a 93 and 94 as a delinquent, I was able to get whatever I wanted. That's what they told me. Well, I went in there as a, just a, a regular degenerate and they gave <laughs> me that same offer. Wow. wow. Well, the, Mike and Jeff need to hear Well, this. disappointed so, in myself they're they're that you got that offer. <laughs> I don't know. They, uh, what are you know. drinking, Steve? Maybe uh, I was my mask. They probably got me and you. Uh, we look a lot alike, Jake. I I like they probably got us confused. The, the other it three. could be. It could be. <laughs> it was like twins. Like same twins. Haircut, Arnold Schwarzenegger same... and hey, I'm Danny DeVito. Josh, <laughs> you're a little slow on the go here. You've been. I, you've been. You've been. Uh... I'm enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what do you think of that that beer there, Steve? You know, it is by far amazing. I mean, I think smell, this is better than the other three all together. All of them put together. You know what? You know what? I mean, it's. You know what we should do with that other pack, and this is this is should be a fun thing. Wait, do no, do our own blend of it, like like literally, cuvee. like is that enough? <laughs> like a little cuvee. That was like a mouthful, Charlie. That's not enough ever. Um, but it's just empty. I think Jake got do our good. do our own little. Uh, I would I would. Hey, modern times. If you ever listen, is this is what I would do if I was doing this next year, this year for 2021. Wouldn't it be Ford fun? Bottle. Don't you have a direct Ford line to them? Being a blend, like a cuvee, yeah, of yeah, the three like, of them. T- like take all three and just do like a third, 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 right? Like, and just like pour it. A in. lot of guys do that. That's like, how I, I. If you look that, you look at that, you know, and that was kind of, um, you know, like yeah, you, you drop how about, all. How about 30, 60, 10. What would you do the ton of coffee? Yeah, that's just me. Hey, you know what? I I'll say this. I'll let them decide what that blend is because they're doing. Hey, they do a pretty damn good job of yeah, blending. Yeah, but what did I tell you about like wizards? What did I sure. tell you about adjuncts and me? I'm an adjunct. It's your junkie. middle name. I'm an adjunct junkie. I'm sorry. That's a good. Look, beer. Was that good? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I drank that too fast. A little choked on it. Yeah. See, it never really smell like coffee and vanilla. I think on the nose. I haven't. I haven't it is. Yet. It's. I. I think it's better than the three separate. Yeah, the vanilla definitely comes through. I think the coconut's a little lighter on this one than I mean after after drinking that coconut. That's right down the pipe, man. One for me. Right away. That's uh, legit. That's it's unbelievable. A, yeah, it's got super good beer. That's batch batch two, you said? That's batch two of the um monster. Well, and what I was talking about we, we could do a, a monster back to back. tones. Yeah. Uh little little flight there. I got I still have a, I still have a little or, original one. Um, of the the first batch, I think I have actually two bottles of that first batch still. Uh, of, but we uh, get the monster tones. Mercy. I'd, I'd, uh, I'd take that challenge. That is a great. And, you know what we could do? Yeah, you know, this would be fun. Do a uh, monsters park, a modem tones, and then do the two blends. So I just I just laid out the next stout fest that we're gonna do. There you I go. Think I just did. I'm gonna have to recover first. I uh. I like the plans there. Uh, I'm a fan of this beer as well. Yep. So this one's. This one's. I mean, this is top notch. I've out of out of all the other three, this one's better than all the other. I I, I will say that. I, I, here's what I'll say. That that coffee stout's probably the best coffee stout I've ever had. Yes. Right. Agreed. That vanilla stout Agreed. might be the best vanilla stout I've ever had. Mm. 
That coconut Maybe. stout definitely is the best coconut stout I've ever had. No. Now, I just had, you know, I, I would say that, but me and, like, on an on a episode a couple of weeks ago, we had that coconut com- uh, convocation, which was Horace's coconut crown, which had been barrel aged. It is the best. I would have loved to have popped that beer side right by there side. Um, yeah. with, with that. Sure. Yeah, um, but it, so, Kyle, I'll, if you're I'll tell listening. You right now, that Horace one was just, it just blew up on the coconut. It was just over. Anything you could imagine, coconut. It was That's unbelievable. Crazy. There was like seven different. I mean, it was uh, that yeah. coconut crown. Where's was the one second of bottle beers. of that, Chris? They only gave it, it was <laughs> one per member, and I actually I brought it over for for uh, it was it was Charlie's birthday show. That was uh, we, happy birthday to me, and it yeah, was each, wonderful. Uh, he. He gave yeah. uh, he he gave um, he, he took a paintbrush and and dipped it in there and gave uh, Steve a quick brush across the tongue and yeah. me a quick brush ac- across and then the he tongue drank the rest and then he drank eleven point eight narrow ounces. brushes too. <laughs> yeah. it's a little tiny. He was like, stick your like, tongue out. The, he's like, now get out of here. Guy? Beat it. What's the painter guy with the- <laughs> Bob Ross? Bob Ross. <laughs> right. Here you go, buddy. Here you go. All right, get away. I'm drinking this thing on my own. No, that was a phenomenal beer. But that's an unbelievable coconut stout. Like yeah, it is. And, and like I said, like, you know, they've they've made. You know, I've had you have beers where like you don't like the flavors that you hear. Like I'm not a huge coconut fan. Like I'm not sprinkling coconut on anything I'm eating. Right. I'm staying but, away from a mountain. He's kind of yeah, bitchy yeah, about yeah. it. I'm like going almond, to almond Joy, right. not even in my right. Like oof, pass right over that. Oh, but I'm in that, it. but that is delicious. That Isn't that, that crazy, though? like that you, coconut stout was phenomenal. Great, you'll like pass over. You'll walk right by that almond joy or that mounds bar, but you will grab a beer if they tell you it's going to taste like a mounds bar or a coconut. You know, like you're like, meh. You know why? Two of those because I don't have to chew it. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Those almonds get right out of the way. I like it. That's a uh, probably Epic. the the best collection Epic. of beers we've had on an episode. Pretty close. It's probably close. the most expensive collection of beers you've ever had on. A- yeah, no, that um. Yeah. I don't know that blue bear. That was you know I. We're but pushing two hundred on these. Blue bear all, alone is three hundred dollars. Oh, nah, well that's secondary though. Secondary. These were, I'm like, primary these, purchasing. Oh. If you're going secondary on those, it's probably six hundred dollars. But at, at cost, you're probably it, uh, just under two. Yeah, yeah, just under two hundred. They're um. So that blue bear was only actually I think it might have been forty bucks a bottle. What a thirty steal. bucks. Yeah, it's unbelievable. If he doesn't do that again, he's nuts. So they, he, I mean, he got invited to this uh, this festival with Canti uh, when their uh, Cantillon was yeah, was releasing their uh, their their uh, blue bear or blue bear. Um, the yeah, I don't know that that happens again. It was great though. He should. So outside I think of coconut, I'm gonna invite, was, sorry, I think I'm going to invite him over here to uh, have a bottle of Cantillon. Maybe he'll make some more then Ooh. and bring it here. There you go. Questions because I I have obviously haven't listened to that podcast. But what was what was the other adjuncts outside of co- was it straight coconut or was it uh, there's some other things? Uh, co- yeah, well, so that bottle there it was um, coffee and I, I I think it was um, it was blueberries was the it was a blueberry stout but it was so well done the um, you know usually blueberry it can kind of be yeah, overpowering blueberries, blueberries a little so, like it's a fun it's a hard it, fruit it's to a work fun, with. It, well, and it's too. The other one that I like that I, I, you know, blueberries are great. I love blueberries. The other one that I want, and, and this is just me selfishly because I, it, in my head, it sounds delicious as a, a cherry stout, but it, it's hard to get that cherry flavor because the cherry flavor often overpowers. And I have, you know, yeah, it's hard to find that kind of cherry. I would like, you know, like a, like a cherry. You know, sees cherry, yeah, taco covered cherry. Like I want to, I want to drink that. Um, but the cherries do great and sours. No, yeah, I blueberries do that. too. But guess what? The way this worked out is you got that sweetness of the blueberry and the fruit flavor, and then the stout part was just it was mind boggling how good that was. I mean, even Steve. Was crying after we finished that bottle. <laughs> you were crying, Steve. Yep. <laughs> it was really, really good. It was amazing. Yeah, no, it was good. Um, 
It was really good. It was, it was really good. Yeah. Yeah. We've had a few good ones. That's for dang sure. Yeah. So they, um, that beer, uh, they say French oak barrel, uh, French oak barrel aged imperial stout, uh, blueberries, chocolate, uh, coffee, hazelnuts, marshmallow, pecans, and vanilla. That'll do it. So like, <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty good. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. It didn't miss. I mean, no, it certainly didn't miss. It was, it was phenomenal. It was a great beer. One of those beers you're super bummed out that uh, you only had got one. Well, that you was know, a funny thing. How many? I said, Chris, how many more of these can we get? And he's all, uh, that, that's, that's it. it. <laughs> that that was the Crushed. best thing that happened to me with um with COVID, right? Because he was supposed to bring all of that beer that he bottled to Belgium and release it at Cantillon when they um there was going to be a few bottles in America that was like a like a lottery, I believe it was or. I wasn't supposed to, like, we weren't going to get a bottles. chance. You it was going to uh, be, you know, gone. it was all going to Europe. And the, uh, so nice. That, thankfully, COVID came along. Hey, praise COVID, right? Jump in here, Steve. That so there does not appear to have been an after potty beer announced. And with this large of a crowd, I do believe a surprise after potty is in store. Oh, so okay. Yeah. What do you got there, Josh? So, so we, we uh, do. Uh, oh, whoa. Oh, uh, is this a second? What do we got here? I don't know oh. what that is. I was like, looky, looky. Wow. We I got th- a little, uh, holy crap. We got some, uh, some woke from, uh, three, from three chiefs. Three wow. chiefs. Um, this is a maple vanilla coffee and pecan. Uh, holy. That like, sounds terrible. Just legitimately Let brought me have this, it. this whale <laughs> share, uh, to the next level. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Josh. There's not enough here for you. Yeah, Josh. Unfortunately, <laughs> you're going to have to drink that modem tone, that that uh, modem tones of vanilla by yourself. I've been seeing how. Uh, full so on a glasses. Charlie Hughes that's, that's recommendation, not the worst, that's not the worst, uh, you know, oh, secondary really... consolation prize I've ever received. <laughs> no. So it's it's not like it's like a you know participation trophy. We're going to hear mean, where it, this came from. It could from. be that, but go ahead, Steve. This is uh, that. Uh, where did that? That come guy from? just never stops talking. <laughs> Where, yeah, where did you come up on that bottle? Uh, on a uh, Charlie Hughes uh, announcement on a recent road trip, I stopped into City Beer Store mm-hmm. and picked up a few things for Charlie. I believe one of them might have been a gift for Chris, which was the most expensive bottle of beer I've ever purchased. Uh, and as I was sitting there tasting some amazing beer with my wonderful wife... Uh, perusing the website, this bottle caught my eye. There were two left in existence, as far as I could tell, and I thought picking up one and finally joining this podcast might be the way to go. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah, so Three Chiefs, super small. You know, we, we, we yeah. talked a lot this episode about uh, the Coconut Crown. That was a beer that was made with Three Chiefs. Uh, so it was Three Chiefs and Horace had made that. Um, and then, um, so yeah, this is uh, the first... Three Chiefs beer um, that that I've uh, smells fantastic right off the barrel. There, it's not the first one you've had. It's just the first one on the podcast, right? Mm. I've never the only no. um, Three no. Chiefs beers I've been able to get a hold of. No Three Chiefs. Yeah, we've had we haven't had any Three Chiefs. Um, they, uh, you know, we just had the collab like Three Chiefs and and Horace, um, yeah. but never. Um, Never a straight uh, Three Chiefs beer, which is great. So these guys are super small. This is a collab with Untitled Art, I believe. Okay, yeah. So Untitled Art, we've had we've had some of their beers. Very good stuff. Yeah, great stuff. They um, it's uh, Wisconsin. They they uh, we also have um, gosh, the guy that does that does uh, Merlots and uh, he does a, a couple different uh, Funk Factory Goosery is the is Untitled Arts uh, right there. So, yeah, this is uh, apple brandy, imperial stout with uh, vanilla beans, coffee, maple, pecans. Uh, collab with, with Untitled Arts. Hmm. Oh, I'm smelling it. It's that definitely is sweet. sweeter than anything You definitely catch had. a little bit of sweetness. Yeah. That's a, uh, um, is that that, uh, the, 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 the brandy barrel that you taste on that on that barrel apple side? brandy. I think so. Apple brandy. It it definitely like has an apple like sour apple. Yeah, littleness to it, like Granny Smith. I like it on the back end. That's yeah. I I do like it that that it's a little sweet on the front, but that that it has a really smooth back end. It's really tasty. Like it well, compared to what we've been drinking, it's 
It's a little thinner, definitely a little sweeter. Um, definitely, it's redder. It's got like a reddish tone to it on the edge. Yep. Mm. Yeah, that's tasty. So that city beer store, Steve, what'd you think of that spot? Uh, that place was something. I had uh, never been to a store quite like that. <laughs> Spent several hours there. I think we had allotted about 15 minutes to go in and pick up the beer for Charlie. Uh, several hours later, we were hustling a bunch of boxes back to the van to <laughs> to pile them into the coolers. It was a wonderful day. Yeah, that's uh, one of the best beer stores in um, uh, in San Francisco area. Uh, and, and you, you had came home and, and we'll be popping this, this bottle, uh, soon. I think it was Toronado 20th anniversary. Yep. We got a, we got another old school bottle coming for a future episode. Uh, I've been hunting for this bottle. We've talked about it a few times. We won't mention what it is, but we, but uh, we, coming up. we finally, uh, we finally caught that whale. We hey. Take a little planes, trains, and automobiles, get back to San Diego, but we'll do it. Can I say the only people that are missing from this right now, mm-hmm. in my opinion, yep. are our buddies up north, Brian, right. and, Brian and Ryan. So I told I told those guys that next bottle we would we would hold off till they could make uh Yeah, that's uh we need them down here. They're we they we need to overhost them. Yeah, like we were overhosted. <laughs> for sure. Definitely. Wow, that was a great that was a pleasant surprise. Good charge right there. That was awesome. Thanks, Steve. I thank you for that. We needed an after party. Wasn't uh yeah, it was like Charlie actually asked me yesterday, what are we gonna do for an after party? I was like, We're slaying four whales over here. Yeah, we killed them. <laughs> and then uh we to to pop that one on us. That was uh, that was an awesome surprise. I thank you for that, Steve. And um man, that Absolutely. was a stout fest uh one point oh. No stout about it. I'm about ready to take a nap. Gosh. <laughs> Those You're were, in uh, your position. Assume your position. <laughs> so right. as it is, I mean, I think that was a that was a banger episode. We we definitely had some phenomenal beers. I I would go uh, coffee. I, I I would I would rank the um, probably the way that we drank them. I think as far as the, the, the first four. Um, yeah. This and this is a phenomenal, super pleasant surprise. That was a that was a great episode of beer. Yep. Man. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, for sure, Josh. Once Thanks again. for coming, Steve. Hey, any, and anytime, Jacob, Josh. Jacob, also glad to be here. Anytime you want to show up with suitcases of beer, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah, you know, there, there's anytime more you want to show up with any beer. Be <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. Cheers. 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 Well, today's show is a little bit long. But that's what you get when you pack it full of some awesome whale stouts with extra awesome commentary from our guests, Josh, Jacob, and Steve. Thanks, guys, for the support. Especially appreciate you guys sharing some of your awesome inventory of beers and the great insight you shared with listeners today. So to summarize today's show, we had four stouts from Modern Times. These were all the 2020 editions. So it was MT Ultra with coffee, MT Ultra with vanilla, MT Ultra with coconut, and then the final one was Monster Tones, which had the following adjuncts, coffee, vanilla, and coconut mixed all together. The after-party beer was Woke, an apple brandy double imperial stout with vanilla beans, coffee, maple, and pecans from Three Chiefs Brewing in collaboration with Untitled Art. If you have feedback, then head over to thepodcraft.com and send us an email, or you can rate and review the podcast in your favorite podcast listening app. Not sure which podcast app to use? Then just head over to thepodcraft.com for a complete list with easy-to-access links. We continue to ask you to please recommend the Podcraft Beer Show to the craft beer friends and family members in your life. The more, the merrier. Thanks so much for sharing your time and attention with us. For Chris and Charlie, this is Tech Guy Steve signing off for this week's The Podcraft Beer Show. Have a great rest of your day. The Podcraft Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020. The podcast is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for information, educational, and discussion purposes only in compliance with the fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. 
It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.